Okay. Formula number two. Tell me it hasn't happened. Those of you that are going, I can't believe he said that. <clears throat> Probably because it brought back memories. <laughs> Thank you. Formula number two. Formula number two, you begin once your bowel's working really well. Formula number two is to go in and get out the old debris that has been collecting in there for years. Formula number one just makes the muscles move, but doesn't always get out the old stuff. Let's take a look at what the medical books say about the statistics of colon rectal disease in the United States today. We'll go back to the Merck Manual. Remember I mentioned that the Merck Manual was published by Merck Sharp and Dome, one of the largest drug companies in the world, and written by an international team of considered the greatest doctors in the world. And I have um, their information on page 12. You can look at it or not. Remember, it doesn't matter. And there's no test. I have many copies of the Merck Manual in my office going all the way back to when they first published it. And in the 1950 edition, they said that only 10% of American adults had herniated bowels or bowel pockets due to constipation. Now, I thought this was weird because Pavel Arola and Dr. John Christopher and Bernard Jensen and John Harvey Kellogg and Dr. Randolph Stone and uh, Henry Linlar and Benedict Lust and all the great natural healers said, we all had this herniation. And doctors said, no, it's not true. But in 19 60, 1955, the Merck's manual said that 15% of American adults had herniated bowels or bowel pockets. In 1972 edition, they said 30% of American adults have herniated bowels and bowel pockets. In the 1987 edition, they said half of Americans have herniated bowels. And in the latest issue, the latest published Merck manual, it now says 100% of Americans have herniated bowels if they live long enough. That's everybody. We have again awarded ourselves with the highest incidence of herniated bowels of anybody in the world. Yeah, we won. We won again. We got the highest disease, the highest amount of herniated bowels. Here's a direct quote. Every person will have many. Every American adult will have many if they live long enough. So what is diverticulosis? Let me give you a short explanation. If I were to draw a picture of your large intestine, This is your appendix, this is your rectum, this is where they want to put the laser radiation, this is your sigmoid colon, your descending colon, <laughs> your sigmoid flexure, your ascending colon, your um, <coughs> hepatic flexion, <laughs> transverse colon, thank you, <laughs> your ascending colon, stop making me laugh, and your cecum, cecum, ascending colon, uh, hepatic flexure, the liver's over here, a transverse colon, a splenic flexure where it turns descending colon sigmoid rectomanus. In your bowel, because as the food is processed in your small intestine and goes in, but since you are only having one bowel movement a day or one bowel movement every other day, um, you begin to have small saccular herniations of the muscular wall of the intestines. And they look just like this. You start developing these herniations. They can develop anywhere. There's just a, it's a bottom line of physics. You have something going in and nothing coming out. It has to stretch. Just like if you were to put too much air in a car tire, it could explode or where there's weak areas of the rubber, it could just start bulging. Who's ever seen that in a balloon or a car tire where it starts to herniate? This is what this is. And because food's going in here three or four meals a day, 
but it's only coming out of here once a day or once a week or whatever, something has to give. And what happens is your bowel gives and fecal matter is shoved into all these herniated areas. And this can be really old stuff. You ever see the uh, uh, Earth Science television shows where they dig a core down into the planet and they pull up dirt from this far down, they go, this was 100 years ago, and this far down, this was 500 years ago, and 1,000 years ago, and so on. Well, you could probably do that in these. You might find, oh, last month's dinner right here. Uh, maybe uh, that junk food is a teenager here. Maybe here the Snickers bar, your first one, Halloween, four years old, right back in here. But it's some pretty ugly stuff in there. Our job now that your bowel is working every day is to vacuum this material out. And this is where a whole nother group of herbs come into play, which I call intestinal formula number two. One of the first materials in this formula is clay. Clay is one of our greatest absorbers, one of our greatest vacuums. The ancients knew that and they used a lot of clay. Clay put on anywhere of the body draws out of the body. It sucks out of the body. So just by putting clay on this part of your bowel, the clay can absorb 30 to 40 times its weight in fecal matter. It's the most powerful drawing agent we know. It's wonderful. This is why people put clay masks on their face. This clay is too strong to put on your face. I put this on my face one night, and in 40 minutes, I thought I was going to suck my brains out through my nose. <laughs> Don't do that. Not a good idea. Anisha, I couldn't believe it. A month ago, I saw her doing it. I said, get that off your face. Before she could get it off her face, her face was all red, looked a little burnt. Not a face mask, a bowel mask. This is the idea. Bentonite clay will remove up to 40 times its weight in this material right here. It's going to lay right against here and draw it out. Secondly, fruit pectin. Fruit pectin draws, but chemically draws. Not like the clay, but through chemistry. Fruit pectin is very ionic, and it will draw out heavy metals like mercury and lead. It will even draw out radioactive material like strontium-90 and other radioactive materials out of your bowel. Now some people say, well, where do I get mercury? Where don't you get mercury contamination? From the amalgam fillings in your mouth that are a lie, they're made out of mercury, that slowly dissolve and leak into your body. Do you know that the American Dental Association today warns dentists from not saying that? But you go to a dentist that's honest and they'll say, oh yeah, that mercury's leaking into your system. Half the fresh fish tested has high levels of mercury in it. And lead, lead's everywhere. Heck, I was in Hawaii not that long ago, and they said there was toxic amounts of lead in the air in Hawaii because the Navy was burning the big batteries off battleships in the land dumps and in the landfills. You can get lead contamination everywhere. The hydrocarbons, the smog, the fumes in the air contain lead. Mercury, lead, and radiation, it's all around us. It's all around us. It also contains charcoal. Charcoal is our greatest detoxifier, our greatest absorber. This is why this formula is black in color, because of the charcoal content. Mm. We just absorbed the carpet. It's a great carpet cleaner, too. <laughs> If you have a white carpet, you may think twice before using it, but we're just going to vacuum this right up and it'll be just as good as new, I promise. <clears throat> Charcoal is known to remove over 3,000 toxic chemicals, insecticides, pesticides, fungicides, all types of environmental chemicals, natural chemicals, anything that'll hurt you. When you cut your water filter in half, what's inside every one of them? Charcoal. Charcoal to absorb things that hurt you. This is the greatest. My son 
gets this in a bottle. He calls it a black baba. And he knows that when he's got some intestinal problems, he gets a black baba. We gave him grape juice the other day. He goes, I don't want another black baba. I said, it's not a black baba. It's grape juice. <clears throat> but uh, charcoal is the greatest absorber. You know, during Desert Storm, they thought that Saddam Hussein was going to use chemical warfare and nerve gas. And so they put our military inside the most modern and high-intensity contamination suits that we have as a modern civilization to protect them against nerve gas and chemical warfare and unknown chemicals. And guess what the suit was filled with? Charcoal. That's all that was in it is charcoal. There is no better absorber of poisons and toxins than charcoal on this planet. I have you, the primitives knew it. Our ancestors, our grandparents knew it. What they have you do? Eat burnt toast when you were sick, right? The charcoal to absorb. It's the greatest absorber of anything that can hurt you. And then there are other herbs in here called mucilaginous herbs like slippery elm and marshmallow that turn slippery and soothing. Flaxseed, the oils that come out of the flaxseed. All these things reduce inflammation in your bowel, put the fire out. If you happen to know someone with a bowel inflammation, let me make this as a side note. 97, 98% of us don't go enough, and we need intestinal formula number one. But there's about 2% of us that go too much. We might have irritable bowel syndrome. We might have colitis, or Crohn's disease, or diverticulitis. And this type of person may have 10, 15 bowel movements a day. Diarrhea, hot, burning, lots of stomach pain, some bleeding. They don't need more bowel movements, right? They don't need formula number one. They would go straight to this formula. This formula will put a smile on their face. They will bless the day they found you because it'll put the fire out starting already. <laughs> Drink up. <laughs> um, it'll put the fire out. It'll soothe the inflammation. It will coagulate that bowel movement into something a little more solid. You have to be careful with diarrhea. Diarrhea is caused, we're not talking about the bowel diseases now, we're just talking about when the rest of us get diarrhea. You know, people say, I got the 24-hour intestinal bug. There's no such thing. Whenever you get diarrhea, you have food poisoning. That's the bottom line. You have food poisoning. You've eaten something that your body, remember we have the tonsils here? and they detect anything that can hurt you going in here, well, you have the Peyer's patches in the small intestine, and you have the appendix at the beginning of the large intestine. The minute that appendix detects any bacteria or fungus or virus or something that could hurt you, it gives you diarrhea. So all this material gets out of your body immediately, and you have a hot liquid stool. What will a doctor give you for that? Something to slow down your bowel. What is that going to do to the bacteria? it's going to make it very happy because it's going to overgrow and now you're going to get worse. Remember we talked about easing the symptom but not looking at what's going on? Well, this is a godsend because it will coagulate the bowel material and turn the diarrhea into a softer or more solid bowel movement but at the same time absorb all the bacteria and poison that's in your bowel. So you get the benefit of both but without having a bacterial overgrowth. So if any of you ever get food poisoning, this is the first place to go, right here. If you're taking a trip around the world, around the country, this is like an American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Um, you're in formula number one, you're formula number two. What's the first thing that happens to most of us in here when we travel? We don't go. Nothing happens. I don't know why. Something wrong with the airplane bathroom? You, you have a problem with your knees jamming into the door. <clears throat> this is how I do. I go, oh, I'm in the airplane bathroom. You shut the little thing, and hopefully the people outside know uh, that you're going. And then you go to sit down, but the knees hit the door, and you can't make it all the way, so you have to press a little. Then you finally get down, and you ever push the plunger while you were still on? You think you're going to get sucked out the back end of the 747. I mean, it's not real comfortable, is it? And on your shoulders, dripping the stuff off the sink that was there last. When you travel, you were probably all just there. 
That's why you're not laughing. <laughs> My first trip to England, I'd never been on a train. We don't ride a lot of trains, and I came into Victoria Station in London, and I had to go. I sat down on the John, and I was going, and the guy was outside pounding on you, don't use the toilet in the station! Don't use the toilet in the station! I don't know what he was talking about. And then when I got off the train, I saw, saw my toilet stuff right down there <laughs> on the tracks. I didn't know that's where it went. <clears throat> <clears throat> You have a few of those experiences, and the next thing you learn is don't go when you're traveling. And your body senses that, and so when you travel, you tend to lose your rhythm, eat different food, go to a different time zone, and the next thing, your bowel isn't working. So that Formula One will help you when you travel that way, and if you eat any suspect food, which happens, this will absorb it and keep you from the food poisoning. You don't know how many letters I get from people saying, thank God, we had a whole group of people. We ate some bad food. We were, they were all in the hospital with food poisoning, and I was okay because I took this immediately. It is amazing what it will do for you with food poisoning. It will put out the fire for someone with the colitis or the diverticulitis, and it will remove the old material. How well does it do that? It does an incredible job. I've had so many patients with all types of bowel diseases and after going through this program, they would come back and the doctor said after doing a colon scope that you have a perfect pink bowel. It looks like a baby's rear end. It's perfect. And these were 70 and 80 year old people with bowel disease. I had a man I met a while ago in San Diego. He had a cancer on his bowel. They couldn't get it off. They were going to resection 12 inches of his bowel. He did six cans of this in a row, went back, had a colon scope and the cancer was gone. I can tell you a thousand stories. How about some worms? Want to hear about some worms? <laughs> what kind of people are you? <clears throat> I didn't design this as a parasite remover, but it does an incredible job. Uh, it removes worms. Now, we've had stories of people getting up and talking about little worms, and then other people talking about the spaghetti and the fettuccine type worms, and other people the lasagna. And uh, <clears throat> we've had all sorts of worm stories. We've had, oh, I remember in my clinic, people used to bring in gallon jars that looked like a snake in there. I swear, I've never seen things like this, uh, jars full of it into my clinic. Uh, people still bring it over to the American Botanical Pharmacy. I've told you about that. We had this lady here with her once every bowel movement. We had one lady have a tapeworm almost 30 feet long. Uh, it took a couple hours to come out. Aliens 4,000. That's pretty scary, isn't it? Um, the bottom line, everybody has parasites. Everybody. One cubic inch of grade A USDA beef on the average has 1,000 parasite larvae in it. We all have parasites. It's a scary thought, but when you die, the worms don't crawl in. They crawl out. Okay? We all have parasites. The key is... Got you right in the guts on that one, didn't I? I heard that. Ah! Um, bottom line is, is are those parasites going to live in you or are they going to flow through you? If you're having two to three bowel movements a day, those parasite larvae don't hatch and they just go right back out of you. If you're pooping once every other day or twice a week, they're going to hatch, they're going to hook on, they're going to love it. It's dark, it's damp, it's stinky, and they got lots of food. And they live inside you. And I've had patients with belly problems and colon problems for 10, 20, and 30 years, only to have them all gone in one night in a toilet bowl full of worms in their house. Um, I've heard all the stories. Uh, we have an increase in the amount of parasitical infections today. It went into a lull for a while, and now it's back on the rise. Uh, so keeping your bowel clean is very, very, very important. Ah, good thought. If your bowel is working normally, I suggest most cleanses once a season. So once a season, you could start with the formula one and then work into your formula number two. If you're on formula one and you take four capsules, 
When you begin this, you start taking five. Always increase by one capsule, if not more, because this is cement. For those of you that might think, oh, I'll just try this on its own, you might never have a bowel movement. Okay, this doesn't create any peristalsis. It goes in, it hugs the wall, and it pulls debris off all the nooks and crannies and diverticulosis to clean your bowel out. And it just sits there. It absorbs and sits there. The number one formula is the formula that goes in and makes it leave and get out of you once it's done its job. That's why you take this six times a day, and then you take the one formula, the capsule or capsules in the evening to get this out. You use the whole can in one week, uh, five to six times a day. You keep taking it, a heaping teaspoon in water. <clears throat> Can I borrow your teaspoon? Live demonstration. This is very scientific. Very difficult. You take your jar. You all have one. You take a little bit of water first. This is the Dr. Schultz method. Otherwise, you end up with concrete on the bottom of your jar. A little bit of water. Now you take your spoon of formula number two. This is very difficult. Watch, take notes. You add, oh, some oranges. <laughs> Put the top on. Voila. That's it. That's all you do. You may do that. Um, looks black, doesn't taste black. Don't be shy. No. If you're stuck, if you're constipated and Formula One hasn't worked yet, you don't have to do this. Because remember, you shouldn't start this until you're going. So those who have their jar, they remember a little water first, then a heaping teaspoon of formula two, and then fill your jar up with water. Now you can use juice. You know what happens when you use juice? It tastes great. What's happening when you use just water? What does it taste like? Nothing. It doesn't taste like anything. It's very bland. Yeah, absolutely, unless you want Montezuma's revenge. Did you know, now this is very serious right now, did everybody know that diarrhea is inherited? It runs in your genes. You started it. <clears throat> Anytime you can get it in, when you're taking it six times a day, I have a schedule listed for you, but you just work to keep pushing it, keep getting it in as many times as you can. If you were to leave this in here, it would turn into a jelly-like consistency, because that's what it's going to do in your bowel. Yummy. Now some people have said, oh, but it's black. Well, black is not a color that we usually eat, but it doesn't taste black. It just looks black. Some people have said to me, isn't this a bit radical? Now, I've mentioned to you, you want to know radical? I had a young lady come to me in her mid-30s, developed a brain tumor. They decided to cut the top of her head off. They did. And when they went to scoop out the tumor, her brain had just like melted. So they put her brain back together, and they were going to tell her when she came to that she was going to die. She came to, and for almost 30 days was in intensive care. She said it felt like someone had hot drills and sledgehammers going through her brain. She was screaming, but couldn't move her whole body because she was paralyzed, so just silently screamed 24 hours a day with no sleep, and no one knew it. That's radical, right? Remember I told you about this, where the poop comes out the vagina? I've heard that story 15 times. That is radical. Where have we gotten 
so mesmerized, so sold, so hypnotized by medical killers and pharmaceutical drug pushers to where we think using a few herbs that grow outside is radical and what these people are doing in the name of medicine is normal. What has happened to us? Boy. <laughs> It just goes to show you what a tremendously great sales job that's been done on all of us. To where we all think, okay, doctor, if you say so, you got to cut off my arm. But we think it would be too weird or radical to use some of God's gifts to us. So enjoy your formula, too. <laughs>